So, you might notice my inventory is looking a little bit unusual this episode. It's full of totems, and potions, and all of my crossbows. This is because, as uh, we covered last week, part of my bargain with Autumn is that I have to go defeat a boss of the above. Which means I need to actually uh, enter in to the above. This swirling circle here only looks mildly ominous. From past experience of the above last season, wandering through the portal should not immediately get me killed. So, three, two, one, let's go. Okay, I thought this was the... Ah, nope. That does get me where I'm supposed to be going. That looks like a trap. That? Right there. Looks like the spot where a boss might spawn. Alternatively, that might just be a normal witch. Several normal witches. And that is one very abnormal witch down here. And where is she? I saw, I think, a name tag. You know, I was expecting her to be more terrifying and less obnoxious. I'm aware that my health bar is doing some stupid things, but I have totems. There are too many witches in this witch's hut. Also, she has way too much health. I did not bring enough of for venturing into the above, apparently. Food. I'm starting to understand why people recommend bringing a fire sword for this fight. It appears my weaponry choices were inadequate. Fortunately, I still have plenty of totems. Which means we will get to see in an hour or two whether or not repeated stabbing can actually slay a witch. I have given up. Not because I think that uh, they are too dangerous for me to fight. But because I do not have the patience to deal with Gamora. And I will acknowledge the magic that we used to make the birch appear my colors has also produced some very interesting uh, effects on other people's builds. Hello, portal. Where do you lead? Over to the domain of the Queen Bee. I approve already of her landscaping. Hmm. 
Well, I don't know what else I will get, but this is a free flower farm. So I will gladly uh, fight the bees. Though I will also wish my multi-shot crossbow shots were slightly more accurate today. And that I didn't have these extra zombies turning up to be even more inconvenient. Would you kindly stop that? Now let us return to this beautiful forest. That is a few too many bees. This is definitely too many bees. I cannot escape, and I have no more totems. And it looks as though there are only two gateways off the Central Island. Well, it seems at least that Autumn will get her wish. She wanted to see me get defeated by at least one of the above bosses. I suppose, to be honest, I got defeated by two of them. Gamora, who I just could not do enough damage to to kill. And the Queen Bee, who dealt me far too much damage. Now, my map suggests that this is the way back to where I was. But the landscape does not quite agree with that. Ah, no. This is the way back. Now, can I grab any of my stuff? without falling back into the hive, and without getting murdered by the bees on the way over there. I see that the queen is out of the hive, which is... Well, I moved my stuff a few inches. Yes, I can afford to br fully replace my armor, or I would not have dared come into the above. Regardless of contracts I have made with Autumn. That said, fully replacing my equipment, including buying more of the netherite, eh. <sighs> Expensive.
Still, I suppose there is one upside to this. If I do lose my wings, I may also lose with it the debt I owe regarding the wings. Particularly since on checking the shop in which uh, Doobie and Genesis and a few others were selling Elytra, they're selling them for a mere five diamonds. I have already given them far more than that in sand. This will not stop me from continuing to give them more in sand. But it makes me feel much less... Makes me feel like the elytra is much less highly valuable than I had, uh, registered it as. I recovered my armor. Everything else is secondary. Also recovered enough food that I can keep sprinting away from the train of things chasing me. Hmm. It appears that I have not recovered my sword. Now, to check whether or not my sword still exists, since having kited them a fair distance, thank you, Creeper, for helping to clear out the infestation of your fellow mobs. This is giving me plenty of practice at the fine art of sprinting past skeletons shooting at me. Which is a valuable Minecraft skill that everyone needs to practice occasionally. Just think on the bright side.
And this is how one leaves the above. And of course, all of my levels are gone. This is fine. There exists a raid farm specifically for that reason. And I will add flaming onto my sword. Just so that next time, I can actually have a chance of killing Gamora. And Von Fiend has been dealt with. Presumably the bee has also been slain. Since I have invited... It appears that at least some of the bees are still here. It appears not only are some of the bees still here, the queen is still here. Unlike Gamora, I don't think the queen heals, which means I am free to fly in. Stab her a few times. Fire off my volley of crossbows. And try again. Do the bees chase me up onto here? Yes, they do. However... The queen has followed me with a bunch of her entourage still trailing behind. I have defeated a boss of the above, Autumn. It only took me, uh, how many deaths was it? I beat a boss of the above and all I got was this lousy titan shard, but... Oh, and flowers. The flowers were the real prize. And now, to hunt down many of her underlings that are buzzing about. Because I do so appreciate flowers. Is there perhaps loot waiting at the bottom of the hive? Since I did, after all, slay the boss eventually.
I'm just starting to hate the number of mob spawns up here. I wonder, are the bees a permanent spawn? Can I simply farm this area for flowers forever? Is that a violation of the terms and conditions of the above? After all, my goal is not to farm this area forever. It is to clear out enough of the bees that I can explore into the hive now that the queen is dead. This is not me camping a spawn. This is me exploring like a person who is not particularly optimized for combat. Hang on. Is the queen back up already? Uh, I'm just gonna leave. So, having rested away your attention from my counterpart, uh, it's time for a progress update. Unlike Spring, who would have shown you the entire process of trial and error and more error and falling off of the edge of the tunnel like a fool, and almost breaking their crown like a fool, I have chosen to skip straight to having a proof of concept. A lovely archway, partially gated but still open and inviting, with banners that I have designed to be suitably ominous and suitably welcoming. Now, the general pattern goes as follows. Every five blocks along, we have a trunk that stretches on across, with a little bit of branch visible through the leaves. I have a couple of simple designs for the side branches that I can alternate between. As it currently stands, the uh, secondary leaf covering on the side is not yet present, which means we can see a bit more of the structure of how I'm creating this custom tree. And on some of the exposed blocks, blueberry vines and spore blossoms will drip down into the tunnel, providing luscious greenery, even for those with the sight. And for those without the sight of magic, the vibrant birch is still vibrant, even if it is green instead of bright pink, as it should be. And the dark oak. Well, the dark oak is affected by autumn in the nether. It is dry and barren, and not as vibrantly red in its autumnal coloring, but it still reflects my presence. And Spring told me to make something bright in vibrant foliage. We have Spore Blossom for that. This tunnel design will still reflect my presence as part of the build. And now, over in this end, we're... let's just remove some of the pre-existing tunnel. Pull it back so that we can see more of what's going on. We have the lovely cross-section, the wood, which is always going to be covered by leaves, the outer warp-to-wart -warp block, which, when seen through the leaves, gives this impression of deep forest, nowhere near as deep as the tunnel from last season, because I'm putting in a lot less effort towards making a several-block-thick leaf wall. But I feel like the effect is still mostly conserved, and 
I have agreed to build another tunnel for her. I have not agreed to copy her build from last season perfectly. And certainly, I see no problem in making a design that is simpler and easier to build. Now, unfortunately, we don't appear to be able to hear the uh, particular feature because it is far too quiet, the noise that Amethyst makes. And I'm aware that it is muffled by the carpet, but even when I remove large chunks of the carpet, we still cannot hear Amethyst chiming noise through my uh, soundscape. However, for those people who are so blessed as to be able to properly hear the noises that Amethyst makes when you walk over it, moss carpeting does not preclude that sound, I believe. And as we can see, I leave this lovely trail of purple particles. This lovely trail of purple particles as I walk along. Now, for those who stray outside, we have soul sand, which will slow you down if you are not blessed with nether compatibility, or allowed you to speed very quickly down my tunnel if you do have soul speed. And then we have magma blocks. Because it would not be a tunnel I built without something in here that could kill you. And it's so very satisfying. The perfectly innocent moss carpeting that hides this dark secret. Or actually a very bright secret, because it's part of the illumination of this tunnel. That and the glowstone hidden in the corner of the branches. Glittering faintly through the leaves. The Magma Blocks are also here to reflect the fact that Shimanabe is also basing in this forest. His presence might be hidden by the outer layer of moss and greenery that Spring and I have created. But it feels very fitting, a tribute. And so, that is the proof of concept, that is the design of my nether tunnel. And that is all I need to say to you.